Do you want to know something crazy? God even understands the weight and the pain of divorce. Let me show you this. Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 6 through 8. The Lord also said to me, in the days of Josiah the king, have you seen what backsliding Israel has done? She's gone up on every high mountain, under every green tree, and there she placed the harlot. And I said, after she had done all these things, he said, return to me. Come back into this relationship that will heal you. You're chasing the wrong things. And her treacherous sister, Judah, saw it. Then I saw that for all the causes for which backsliding Israel had committed adultery. So I put her away. Listen to the wording. And I have given her a certificate of divorce. Yet her treacherous sister, Judah, did not fear, but went and played the harlot also. When God speaks about a certificate of divorce, what is he meaning by this? It meant that he was handing him over to the Assyrians so that the Assyrians would come in. He's saying, all right, you want to live for the world? Go ahead and be with the world. They're going to come in. They're going to take you out. They're going to divide your land, and they're going to take you into captivity. Is that what you want? But you're chasing a relationship with the world. That's what you get from the world, not from me. And then God was also speaking this warning to, the, to Judah because Judah soon after would also follow in the same footsteps. And then instead of the Assyrians coming after them, it would be the Babylonians that came to them and brought them into captivity and destroyed the temple of God. Everything was destroyed because they would not listen to the Lord. And your marriages today, everything is destroyed when you are not listening to the Lord. Jesus must come first every time. He must come first. And we talked about not having knowledge. Knowledge of who the Lord is and then everything falls apart. That doesn't just apply to the nation or the culture. It also applies to every situation. In your marriage, if you don't have knowledge of who Jesus is, the marriage falls apart. If you don't have knowledge of who Jesus is in your friendships right now, the friendship starts to fall apart because you are led by your emotions instead. We see this hurt over and over and over again. Why aren't we listening? Why do we keep complaining to God saying, God, I want to do what I want to do. I want to go where I want to go and I want to be with whoever I want to be with. And God is looking at everything coming because he already knows the future. And he sees the pain coming. He sees the captivity and the bondage and the hurt. But I also want to share this truth with you. God never gave up on Israel. He restored the land. We see that fulfillment today, right? Israel is here today because that is the fulfillment of God's promise because he loves Israel. He loves his people. And I also want to make this clear. And this is where I believe this is going to be healing today. But I need you to understand that God hates divorce. Because God hates the hurt that it causes. Let me read this to you. Malachi chapter 2, verses 14 through 16. The Lord is speaking to the priest here. He said, but you have been unfaithful to her, meaning you have been unfaithful to your wives. Though she remained your faithful partner, the wife of your marriage vows, did it the Lord make you one with your wife? In body and spirit, you are his. And what does he want? Godly children from your union. So guard your heart. Protect your heart. Remain loyal to the wife of your youth, for I hate divorce, says the Lord, the God of Israel. To divorce your wife is to overwhelm her with cruelty, says the Lord of heaven's armies. So guard your heart. Do not be unfaithful to your wife. Why is the prophet of God speaking in this way? Because the priests were leaving their marriages, leaving their families behind to chase a younger woman. And God was saying, that's cruel. That's a cruel thing to do. But lust will make you dumb. Lust will make you foolish. And so you need to guard your heart because what you're looking at is the direction you go towards. And so many of you today need to learn how to guard your eyes and be like Job and not look at things that bring you into lust because lust will speak to you and whisper to your ear and tell you to do foolish things. Let me make it very, very clear. To do this, it's dumb. That's what the Bible is stating. It's dumb to chase a relationship like this and leave your family behind. 
And we live in a fallen world. And so I'm very sensitive to this topic as well because as a pastor, I've heard all kinds of stories. Stories that I wish I didn't have to hear because sometimes, unfortunately, divorce is the only option due to the person cheating and cheating and cheating and cheating and cheating and cheating and, cheating and never repenting, never coming back to the Lord, never wanting to make anything right, just wanting to live for themselves. And yes, adultery is biblical grounds for divorce. Matthew 19, verse 9, whoever divorces his wife and marries someone else commits adultery unless his wife has been unfaithful. And another truth that I've seen and been asked as a pastor is, what if my spouse just won't stay? I tried everything that I could and I prayed and I want to stay with them, but they do not want to stay with me. And, and notice, I'm going to show you this scripture here, but the scripture is very clear that this should be the unbeliever's heart, not the believer's heart that an unbeliever would not want to be with you because of your love for Jesus. But sadly, even in today's culture, we see people just wanting to leave a relationship because they're led by emotions and lust. 1 Corinthians 7, verse 15, but if the husband or wife who isn't a believer insists on leaving, let them go. In such cases, the believing husband or wife is no longer bound to the other, for God has called you to live in peace. We know this to be truth, but also let me share with you another truth. If you can fight for the marriage, fight for the marriage. Do whatever it is that you got to do, whether you got to get counseling, or if you got to get together and say, all right, it's time to pray. No longer attack each other. You want to change your home life? Stop attacking each other and start attacking the devil instead because he's placed a lot of lies in your heart and be honest with each other. Have open communication because without open communication, there is only manipulation. And that will tear up your relationships and your marriage even more. God wants to heal you. And yes, adultery is biblical grounds for divorce. But let me also state it like this. It doesn't mean divorce has to be your first option. And sometimes God is calling you to do the most difficult thing, which is to forgive. And see a change. And see restoration. And I want you to know that there are many testimonies in this church of people who have gone after the wrong things and God allowed healing. And now the marriages are stronger than they ever were before. And the reason I'm sharing this, and God knows your broken heart. Like I said, I'm, I, I wanna be sensitive to this because I've heard all kinds of crazy stories. I don't know what you've been through, but God does. God knows exactly what you've dealt with. And, and, and let me also clear this up because I get asked this as a pastor, what if the environment is abusive? Okay, if the environment is abusive, get out of the house. Separate yourself from that environment. If you feel like your life is being threatened, your children's lives are being threatened, get out of that house. The Bible also talks about a separation that can take place. Separation doesn't always mean divorce, though. Sometimes it means that you just have to go away into a different environment to see that person change. Okay, to see if they will change. But in many cases, when it comes to this, you also see people um, that don't want to listen to the Lord and they just rebel against him anyway and give a certificate of divorce. But if you can fight, fight for the marriage. And if you've done everything that you can, the Lord will heal your heart. He loves you. And the reason why I'm going over this hard topic is because this is what God does with us. Every single day, this is what he does with us over and over again, which leads me to my second point, which is this, God will never stop pursuing you. God will never stop pursuing you. Matthew chapter 18, verse 12. If a man has a hundred sheep, but one of the sheep is lost, what will he do? He will leave the other 99 to go after the one. Who is the sheep that we're talking about right here? It's us. Jesus comes after us. He sees the 99, but the one that is lost, he sees you hurting. He sees you alone. He sees you in sorrow. He sees you in misery. And he leaves everything behind to bring you back to tell you that I got something better for you. 